Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chassis Variant series of the Mistlinks, also known as the Koshi in the Inner Sphere, as named by the DCMS forces that first encountered it on the field. So this is the D variant, uh, this one was designed specifically as a sniper mech, and to that end uh, the clan engineers added a Ultra AC2, and then for any medium to short range engagements it had a single ER medium, followed up with an ER small. And so essentially this uh, means the mech uh, was capable of being able to stay at extreme ranges and pepper targets and uh, fire maneuver regularly. It was probably better suited to engaging vehicles than it was ever engaging mechs however as an Ultra AC2. Really didn't do a hell of a lot of damage even on tabletop. It was a good harassing weapon and if you got a lucky hit with it on an exposed area obviously it could cause some nice critical damage but that was roughly it. One of the main major upsides of the uh, smaller ballistic weapons in the 2 category is that ammunition generally wouldn't run out on tabletop. However, in MechCore Online, your ammo is going to run out pretty quickly. Uh, the default loadout for this only comes with a single ton of ammo for the Ultra AC2, which gives you about 75 shots. Considering the propensity for this weapon to jam as well, particularly after a single shot's fired, uh, which I think PGI definitely need to look into, uh, it makes the weapon a bit more of a detriment than a benefit. The other problem is, is that two damage just really isn't a lot um, without the, the without the rate of fire. Obviously, the more you bring of a smaller weapon like a, uh, AC2s, Ultra AC2s, LB2s, it means you can do more damage quickly. But a single one is pretty naff, and given the weight of this mech at 25 ton, it can't really bring that much more in the ballistics category. Not without sacrificing a hell of a lot of its armor and pretty much all of its other weaponry. So uh, the D variant I think has potential, it just, I don't think it can ever really live up to any kind of potential. Skills can probably help with the ammunition a little bit, but uh, the D variant I think is, is a real tough sell. Uh, I Personally I like it for me because there aren't a lot of um, AC2 equipped mechs in the game. Um, that this, this is evident of the fact that I think PGI have purposely stayed away from variants that seem to come with AC2s, Ultra AC2s or LB2s. Uh, the few variants that come with them, most players immediately remove them because there's not really much point in having a single ballistics slot, for instance, that's occupied by a single weapon like that because it's just not going to work in the world of Alpha Warrior Online. So, yeah, uh, your backup weapons are your energy, which with a little bit of uh, messing around, you can obviously get them up to being 2BR mediums instead. Yeah, you'd probably do better with this by switching out the ballistic to a, a heavy machine gun and whacking in a couple of uh, tons or a ton and a half of ammo and just upgrading the energy weapons to something that's a bit more to your playstyle. Even a couple of ER mediums will probably be more effective than the single Ultra AC2, sadly. So yeah, um, again, it's it's a tough it's a tough one to recommend. Um, sadly, the the Koshis are kind of left out in the cold, and even with the upcoming Piranha, that's going to overshadow the Koshi as well, uh, because at least the Piranha has the benefit of the fact that it's got so many machine guns standard. It means it can very quickly burn something down with a DPS, where and, and the fact that it's not an Omnimax, so it's not limited by the fact that. You've got a fixed engine, fixed jump jets, fixed uh, fixed equipment like a Beagle probe, that kind of thing. Um, the the Piranha is going to completely uh, outshine this uh, this mech. Uh, I think actually the Piranha could end up being the death of the Mislinks in MechCore Online. Uh, I don't think you'll see many people running them after that, especially with uh, the Piranhas higher speed and the, uh, the even it, I mean it even has backup weapons by comparison the, the Piranha even comes with a couple of medium lasers for God's sakes uh, with uh, so many machine guns that this this mech as an Omni mech is is left out and considering this video is so long as just just to summarize it now the the D probably isn't worth it you're probably better off with the Mislinks Prime or the Mislinks B uh, or the G but the C and the D, I think, are complete write-offs. Uh, the A is a write-off as well, don't bother with the A. So, the, <laughs> the the problem with the Omnimax system in this game is that they've somehow made clan tech less desirable. Which is an achievement in and of itself, really, when you think about it, because 
the whole uh, the whole point in the Omnipod system was that it was supposed to give the clans more flexibility, and the fact that their weapon systems were supposed to be more efficient. But not only have they made clan weapon systems more heat inefficient, they overheat you quicker. The pod space restrictions actually hamper your mech more. The inability to do anything with your engine size completely hampers Omnimax, and this isn't. This is, you know, highlighted here by this fact that the Mislinx, which is five ton heavier than the Piranha, I guarantee that thing is gonna. The Piranha is just gonna completely run it over, and there's gonna be no reason to play a Mislinx after that fact because the Piranha is is just gonna be so much more efficient on the field. Uh, and this is all because you can see it again with the Kodiak, you can see it with the Marauder 2C, you can see it with the Highlander 2C, the Orion 2C, the Hunchback 2C, that any of the 2C mechs are far more common than some of the Omnimax now, because they can just do the job better. And that's not the point. The The whole point was the standard battle mechs, they were the garrison mechs, they were the things that were uh, given to Salami units and stuff like that, the, you know, though this is your last chance mech, or this is, a, you know, you're, you're not a frontline trueborn. You're a freebirth clan warrior, so you don't get the the snacky shit. You don't get the Omni Mech, um, and some Omni Mechs are um, aren't as effective as some of the standard battle mechs, but that's generally because they're a later design, or they're a totem mech. For instance, the Kodiak is the totem mech of Ghost Bear, so it tends to have a, a pretty decent weapon loadout, but. In Mechroy Online, because the Kodiak is a is a battle mech, you can change the engine so you can fit more armor, or you can obviously completely redesign all the weapon systems. Whereas you can't really do that with the Omni Mech system. I don't know how they broke it. I don't know how they borked it so fucking badly. Uh, I'm not even a fan of the clans, but if you're going to do them, do them properly. For God's sake, if you're going to introduce something, don't just bring it in and gimp it. The, the first chance you get in some kind of half assed botched attempt at balance. There are plenty of ways you could have balanced the game, and and you didn't. And yeah, you know, PGI's answer over over the years has been, oh, we'll just we'll just nerf this. Oh, we've come up with this brilliant energy draw system. Oh, that that was fucking terrible before it even got out the gate, so we're scrapping it. Uh, oh, we're going to introduce ghost heat and then claim that we never called it ghost heat, even though there are uh, old. Uh, posts by some of the devs calling it Ghost Heat, you know, with a little blackboard image that had all the all the stats and stuff written on it. I think if you dig around, you'll probably find it. But I remember them calling it Ghost Heat way back when. Uh, yeah, th th this is all stupid shit PGI have done, and they've gimped their own clan max, and it's it's a really dumb design decision because as much as I dislike the clans, you can't deny the fact that they make a lot of money. They're very popular. A lot of players of uh, MechWarrior love the Clan Mech stuff. There's plenty of Battletech people out there who love the Power Gamer dream of being able to take out a Clan Mech instead of uh, taking out an Inner Sphere Mech. And yeah, they've, they've, they've fucked it. And every new Battle Mech for the Clan side they add instead of an Omni Mech is going to further highlight that uh, as time goes by. And that's one of the main problems. And people are asking for Inner Sphere Omnis. I don't know why you'd want Inner Sphere Omnis. Because it's just, it's not worth it. Seriously, you do not want locked hard points and omnipod sizes in this thing. The the industry, the battle mechs are always going to out, outshine them because of the the, the sheer customize customizability of those mechs by comparison. Uh, it it's completely outstrips them. I don't know, oh, they broke it so badly. But yeah, yeah, that, that's that's my rant about that anyway. So. Because this was a long video and I thought I'd take that opportunity. Because I don't, I don't know why this match lasted so long. Close to, close to 11 minutes. That's very rare in Mech Warrior Line when you think about it. Most, most matches are average, what, about 5-6 minutes? Before the team get completely rolled? It's very, very few matches ever get close to the 15 minute time limit. So, yeah, this, this was one of those rare occasions. And there's still another roughly 2 minutes left of this match. I just use this tactic. Whenever I've got a light mech on this map, on river, I usually try and get on this building if there's no one else up there because 9 times out of 10 you'll come across a team that don't really keep an eye on that part and that allows you to kind of poke and, and shoot them for a while. I, I got the Timberwolf earlier, he, he had a really rough time when I was stood on the building and just kept sniping him until I blew his side torso off. And then when he stepped out then he got LRM to death. And this map was, this match was good because it was a bit back and forth, it was a bit knife edge. Uh, it could have gone either way, and then, you know, the red team 
finally managed to sort of overcome the whole thing and uh, we got pushed out. So, yeah, that was that one, unfortunately. Yeah, the last chunk of this is just uh, waiting for the base, so I'm just going to edit down to the scoreboard now. And uh, that'll be that, so uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the rant, because I don't think I've done a rant for a while on the channel. So, uh, yeah, have a good one. See ya. Bye, bye, bye.